The second remedy that Edward Bach discovered was clematis. Again, this was growing near Krakow, where he went in September 1928 to look for plants from which he might make what he later described as some new remedies. Remember, at the time, he was still working as a homeopath. I wonder what it is that calls someone to be an explorer, someone who discovers new things. When Columbus set sail, what was his vision? When Martin Luther King said, I have a dream, what was he to awaken in those who heard his words? Clematis is a dreamer, but also a visionary. And we might imagine that Bach understood that dream. This is the remedy of imagination, the creativity drawn from another level of reality, the dream that we might have a different and better future. But Dr. Bach is somewhat critical of this condition. As an Empathians person, he might well be. He says, are you one of those who find that life has not much interest? Who wake almost wishing there was not another day to face? That life is so difficult, so hard and has so little joy? How good it would be just to go to sleep. He focuses on the desire to withdraw from life. And I think that he also took this from his observation of patients with what was called sleepy sickness. This was an epidemic in the 1920s and there was no known cause nor cure. One possibility is that it was related to the catastrophic emotional trauma of the First World War. Now, you might wonder how this relates to the clematis of Dr. Bach's flower remedies. But for me, there is a curious dynamic between being awake and being asleep, between conscious awareness and the desire for forgetfulness. Bach speaks of indifference, not sufficient interest in present circumstances, living in the future, looking forward towards death. So that there's a great range between the visionary and those who merely seek to escape from life. And looking at the plant may help us to see what this is really about. First, look at the stalk or stem, which is the emotional element. In Clematis, these stalks are curving, lacking direction, fibrous and dry. There's little water here. Most of all, we can see that they lack the clear, upright sense of I and I am that we get with Empathians, for instance. Emotionally, Clematis is all over the place. And the root, the earth element, the past, the family, the sense of belonging to the world, where is it? Well, you can follow the stems back along the ground, but it's difficult to tell whether you're going to go up to the sky or down into the earth. The compass, which helps us to orientate, the compass is confused. And the dryness of the stalk means that there is a lack of emotional engagement, a lack of response. We could call out, Hello, is anybody there? But the clematis person does not hear. It's as if they are covered with the headphones. The leaves are actually in neat opposite pairs, quite organised. But because the, stem, the stems are so disorganised, they appear to be almost random. The emotional turbulence makes the clear thoughts appear confused. Now this is quite interesting. 
A clematis person may come out with something really important, but since they appear to be so disconnected from reality, we don't give it credence. We don't pay attention. How does that leave the clematis person feeling? They're unconcerned. They don't mind at all. And how do we know this? Well, the leaves are glabrous, without hairs, so they don't sense outwardly to what others think or feel. The flowers of clematis reinforce this message of indifference. There are no petals, similar to scleranthus. So the responsive sensing element once again is absent. There is a contradiction here, however. The flower is actually a combination of many flowers, or at least there are multiple pistils and stamens. Let me see if I can draw it and show you what I mean. In the centre, you have the gathering of the female part of the plant, which is the pistil. But there are many of these, like that. And surrounding them come the male part, like this, fanning out. Now when you first look at it, it's difficult to tell the difference between this and this. But the pollen from here is going to migrate onto the pistil. And as I said, there are no petals. You might expect there to be petals here. All there is, in fact, is four sepals, which close to hold the plant together, and that's on a stem here. What I like about this, actually, it's, it's almost as if this is a raying in or a raying out of energy within the flower. Now, is there another flower which does this? Well, it's chicory. So what do these two remedies have in common, that they have this multiplicity of flowers on the one flower head? There is something here about the way that clematis relates to other people. The point of transformation, of change, which is the flower, is the way that this type of person returns from the land of private dreams to a place where we all meet together. With chicory, it's the same. Finding the place where all of us count equally, equally important, equally loved, without family or favour. The delightful thing with the clematis flowers is the way that the seeds develop. This single pistil here will actually grow out as a feathery head. I can show you perhaps most effectively with this, which is the flower head. There are the seeds and these are the extended feathery heads that you get with the seed. And of course this wonderful feathery tail is what will allow it to fly. And so it, the feathery tail will act as a sail when the seed is torn away. As Dr. Bach said, they are longing to be blown away and start again. Yet, although there is that longing for a new beginning, Clematis seeds remain attached to the plant throughout the winter months, reluctant, in fact, to let go and truly fly into the future. So there's another contradiction here. Or perhaps we should say there is a dichotomy. Like the balanced tightrope walker, Clematis can hold opposites. It links both sky and earth. At best, it can be a creative genius. But if it does not reach to earth, it's merely empty dreaming. The seeds fly away, but there may be no future, at least not here 
in this world.